I will say straight off the bat that the Gold Planner GL AMT16 is unlike anything you've ever heard. It does not sound like a planar. It does not sound like a dynamic driver. It doesn't sound like a balanced armature set, and it doesn't sound like any hybrid I've ever listened to. It is quite unique. Hello again, this is Tone Deaf Monk. Been away for a while because I've been busy listening. Uh, while I was gone, I managed to pick up a set of Soft Ears Twilight. That's going to be an awesome video. That is now my new reference. Um, but I'm not here to talk about that one today. But that's why I haven't been doing videos is because I've been too busy trying to listen. And I just ended up so graciously getting loaned a set of very unique IMs. Now, these are called the Gold Planar GL-AMT-16s. Now, Gold Planar is a company that is known for making headphones and IMs, but they also seem to be the first company to come out with an air motion transformer IEM. And I'll explain what that is in a bit, but it, it's unique. It's not a D, uh, dynamic driver, it's not balanced armatures, and it's uh, not a hybrid, it's a different technology and I'll introduce you to it if you're not familiar already. Explain a little bit how that works. But let me flip over this camera and I want to show you how ridiculous this over 10 pound box is. So hold on. Okay, you ready for this? After you get your box, comes in this big black box. You take the top cover off, you're met with a wooden crate. You take the wooden crate out. Hold on. I, I. Okay, wooden crate came out. Then you got a black velvety thing. Then you got black bag thing. Instruction manuals, which I'll rave about in a bit. Pelican 1010 case inside here comes your IMs comes with these and these are five different tuning nozzles I'll get into that as well comes with a cable comes with more tips than you probably already own I mean ridiculous modular cable It's an SPC and gold foil cable. Pretty cool. Over here's uh, my iFi stack. Downstairs is the Gishelli. Some more stuff coming up. I want to show you this. You see that? That is an Air Motion AMT tweeter. This is in my Atom Audio monitors. Why am I showing you that? Well, because that's what that is in these. Okay? All right. I hope I didn't make you sick by flipping all that uh, camera. I just wanted to show you how ridiculous the over three kilogram boxes. 
I mean, if you're going to spend $1,499 on these things for a yet unproven uh, technology to be shoved in an IAM, that's a lot of money you're going to pay for an unboxing truly worthy of your time. That being said, let us get into this review. Thank you to Dennis, another audiophile locally who reached out and offered to let me test try these bad boys out. I was pretty excited because I know air motion transducers. I've known for a while in very much high-end audio, it is the Rage. Obviously in my studio monitors the same and in my car as well. I've upgraded my tweeters to AMT tweeters as well. There's a reason for that. They have a unique sound and properties that make them very desirable for those. Let's talk more about AMT just for a second. Um, this is kind of a new use for a 30-year-old dream. By that, I mean the Gold Planner GL AMT-16. It's a single driver IAM utilizing a 15.5 millimeter AMT air motion transformer. This technology isn't new. This uh, was invented uh, by Dr. Oscar Heal in the 70s. Okay, so but let's get into a little bit more techie stuff. And like I do in most of my important videos, I timestamp it and it's in the description. So if you want to jump to a section, there you be, and you don't have to listen to me rant on. Um, I like this I am very much, and if you were uh, interested in a very organic, analog sounding I am, pay attention to this one. And you had 1500 bucks to blow. But in the future, it might not be that. Uh, I'm going to be spending a little bit more time because I think uh, it's it's good to know about this. Um, so an AMT is a form of an electrostatic driver. Uh, it's a dipole, meaning that the sound comes out of both sides of it uh, simultaneously. Uh, essentially, there is a diaphragm membrane um, up front, and there's some powerful magnets at like 45 degree angles at the back. Uh, there's a dampening material to kind of absorb that one side of the, of the wave, the sound wave. Uh, whereas conventional dynamic drivers have a voice coil. Let me see if I can uh, take a piece of paper here and give you an idea. So if you just had a standard voice coil, the motors are at the edges where the voice coil is and it's pushing it in and out. And as that's happening, you can see what's happening to the center here, and it's starting to do concave. And that adds a lot of artifacts to the sound. So AMT doesn't work that way. Um, so there's a diaphragm, and it's bonded to a layer of captain, um, which is a, uh, if you're not familiar with that is, it's kind of a, a polymid film. Um, and a layer, then there's a layer of aluminum that's sandwiched on top of that. And the circuit board is actually printed on that. And I'll sh pull up a graph here. and You can see what I'm talking about there. Um, and basically, this entire diaphragm is the motor structure. Different from that one where it's just being dynamic driver, which is being pushed at the edges. Different from a planar where a planar is flat and it just does this. Um, not similar to a dynamic driver, it's a completely different principle. This is different from all of those things. The diaphragm itself is actually folded. Um, hold on, okay, say I take the same piece of paper and what I do is I fold it in a way like this and I put a whole bunch of uh, folds in it. 
you can see the surface area is going to be a lot greater. Um, and the, basically the principle of uh, air motion transformer is the circuit board is printed all along the surface and electrical current is passed through it in opposing directions. So what happens is it's actually forcing the diaphragm to expand and contract, kind of like a uh, an organ or uh, a bellow, right? So it's pushing air out, in and out, in and out. Um, it doesn't have to move very far in order to actually get a lot of volume out of there. And that's how these work uh, incredibly well. So not only do you have a very large surface area, you have uh, a, a way to do it in a very fast transient response uh, with very little distortion. And that's kind of the key to this whole technology here. Um, so there is a... Uh, just a whole lot of uh, surface area for the amount that you get. And in fact, it's it's like an equivalent. So this 15.5 millimeter diaphragm that is squeezed into this IEM is equivalent of like having a 120 millimeter dynamic driver, right? So it's a roughly about eight times the size of the surface volume that you would get. Um, so that's pretty important to know because... Um, every AMT that's currently on the market is either for mid-range or tweeters. Um, so you don't see a lot of full range ones. You do, but not yet, uh, in our market in IAMs for certain. Now, this is not, again, a new technology per se. It's been around for over 30, almost 40 years now. Um, because of the higher cost to manufacture this, that's why you don't see it too often. And I think over time, now some of the patents have wore off and it's being copied in Jifi. So you see a lot more of it now and at reasonable prices. So a little interesting thing as I was doing some more background uh, research on this, I found out that there was a company, because it's kind of weird that all of a sudden you see this in an IM, and I was like, well, how did that, how did we get to this place? And uh, it kind of made sense there. In 2020, there was a company called uh, Headphone, H-E-D-D Phone, um, and these are guys are from X Atom Audio, like that monitor I just showed you right here where they use AMT and they've developed their own AMT uh, tweeters for their monitors. And so these guys made a pair of headphones with full range AMT driver. And this was back in 2020. And these things had a frequency response of 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz. So pretty outstanding, right? The problem was uh, that they were pretty heavy and they needed a shit ton of power to make them go. So not exactly ideal, right? You got this big heavy thing on your head connected to a nuclear power plant is probably not uh, the best, but it sounded wonderful. Now, um, we have seen an absolute ton of planar headphones on the market as well, and of course, IEMs. Uh, the difference between planar and an AMT is the planar diaphragm is just sitting on a, on a flat surface, right? Uh, and it's not folded like the AMT. Uh, the AMT just can move a whole lot more air with better control and a whole lot less distortion uh, than planar. So um, we've seen leaps and bounds now in pricing for that. I mean, I think I bought my AMT tweeters from my car for under $100. Uh, and I see Car Audio has now joined mainstream. Uh, brand names now using AMT in their component sets as well. So all this is now trickling down. Uh, it was only a matter of time, really, before full range AMT uh, got squeezed into an IAM shell. Thus, the gold planer GL AMT16 was born. I'm sure there will be more options as the sound and technology improves um, and make it a more affordable. So that's why I think it's important to pay attention to this technology. Not everyone's going to spend $1,400, $1,500 on these IMs, 
but uh, you're not going to be a surprise when you see it come down for 600, 300, 150, 75 bucks, right? 30 bucks. Um, so I'll tell you straight off the bat for these ones too. Unlike your typical AMT in my uh, AMT in my Atom Audios, they're extremely linear, low volumes. Medium volumes, high volumes, they're, they're crystal clear. So even at low volumes, you get all of the benefits of that amazing technology in that tweeter. These IMs aren't like that. Um, I listened to it at low volumes and I went, that was horrible. Um, even on my uh, Hibby R6 Pro 2 at high gain, it barely has enough juice uh, to get there. So um, you're not driving this one off your phone. And why would you? It's 1500 bucks, uh, And you're not listening at low volume. And if you do, you'll, you'll make a comment that these things sound terrible because they do. Um, so let's talk a little specs. Um, Again, one 15.5 full range AMT driver. That's what these are using. It's got a really nice, comfortable, anodized aluminum alloy shell. The nozzle itself is there. And like I said, we'll get into more of that as well. Um, there are five interchangeable nozzles. You just basically We've seen this before. Oops, let me put my foamy tip on it to help remove it. And the little nozzle comes off. I don't want to take it off right now. <laughs> I'm terrified of losing it, and they're not mine. So, um, put my little foamy tip on. That's a story, too. Detachable cable, 0.78 modular. Um, frequency response, 15 hertz to 50,000 kilohertz. Wow. Uh, and I know it gets there. Um, uh, well, you can't hear that obviously, but it can do it. Um, impedance is 16 ohms with a sensitivity of 102. That's why it needs power to make it go. They're fairly light, seven grams each, uh, not very heavy fit test uh let me squish this foamy in here beautiful super awesome isolation excellent fit great shell shape should work for a lot of people uh pretty terrific let's go into some pre-sound impressions how did i get to this stage right here and it was a journey. It really, really is. Uh, so before I can get into actually how this sounded, I need to go through the process of listening to each of these five little nozzles. Now, some of these nozzles for some companies have different foams or tuning filters. This is not like that. Uh, what they did here is they changed the internal diameter of the bore and as you do that and if you look at this graph you will see that it dampens the highs noticeably on paper and definitely in ear so it makes a huge difference though the wider the bore the more highs come out of these things comes uh, stock tuning with the smallest diameter and that's how I started listening to it and then uh, I went to the biggest one and it was pretty noticeable of what was happening there so at that point I spent some time listening to both writing down some impressions of what I thought was some tracks there and then I graphed this bad boy to just uh, make sure that what I was hearing uh, is now what was, uh, could I see it on a graph? And yes, you can. It was, it made sense. 
uh, at that point. So um, it's kind of interesting that the diameter of the bore uh, affects pretty much on the graph, nothing but high frequencies, but the way our brains work, it doesn't work that way. So if I uh, get less high frequencies, I get more bass, according to our little brains. So, um, and that's a perception of just how we work. So there's kind of the two factor. Yes, it's doing a physical tuning and a brain tuning as well with these different um, stock filters. So starting off right off the bat, uh, my first configuration was the 5.5 millimeter wide with an internal diameter of 2.7. It's the narrowest um, diameter and it's got a little screen on it. It's the one in the middle. Now, uh, I was using my favorite uh, JVC spiral dots, silicone, uh, because they're really comfortable and they're wide bore for a great stage. Um, I loved the, um, the, the I, I love the highs, but I, there was something going on. Um, the upper mid sounded a bit muted, and there was a sharpness, a sharpness, a sibilance to the vocals um, that I found quite substantially with this nozzle. And then again, I went to the opposite extreme with the biggest nozzle, the six six millimeter outside and four point four inside. Um, and when I did that, um, what happened there was... So I switched to the 6 millimeter 4.4 bore, the, the biggest bore. And with that one, uh, it brought up the most amount of highs. But I found that the mids and the vocals became quite thin um, and making instruments uh, like guitars sound... Uh, funny with not enough note weight to them and then I stepped it down one more where the nozzle had its six six millimeter outside 3.8 inside and has a screen on it so actually it was the six millimeter outside and 3.8 millimeter inside where I ended up uh, using uh, just because I found that one to be the best of both worlds. So that uh, particular nozzle uh, put up a lot more highs, but it didn't, uh, it wasn't, got rid of some of the shoutiness and the sibilantness I found in the vocals. I found with that one um, a little bit still, it was making instruments uh, start to go. So at this point, I really didn't need to do a critical listen of all five. I had a really good understanding of what uh, the internal diameter bore was making the sound signature uh, sound like, and I had the graph to back that up um, to, to look at what I was hearing, if that makes sense. So um, what came to my eyes and my ears on the confirmation was also something that on all these different nozzles, there is a peak around two kilohertz. Uh, and that was for me causing some, that, and that was the, the top of the pentagon. That was the highest point. Uh, and I found that was somehow making it shouty and sibilant and thin. And it was part of the, the problem for me. So at this point, then I went onto the forums and I asked a few people who own this set uh, their impressions and what they did um, if they had the same kind of experience as I did. And it was uh, suggested to me that uh, these things require a foam tip in order to get rid of some of that. Uh, and that is exactly what happened. Um, and what I didn't get any sound impressions other than that from from that and I didn't want any more because I wanted to make my own so then I started playing around with uh, filter nozzles um, filters on the nozzle sorry and I started off with uh, an old um, a tantrum oxygen filter so probably the highest level that I have and 
I also graphed that as well. And it was quite noticeable that that two kilohertz bump was knocked down quite a bit. And then I did some critical listening on that one. And I found that with that application that it was now almost sounding recessed, the vocals. And uh, definitely more warm and dark. And I was kind of... So in the overall tuning, there's this the bass. It's just very... You know, uh, it's not uh, overly exaggerated. And then because this IM has such amazing air and extension, if you knock down that upper mids, uh, you will get too much of the air and extension and it'll sound funny as well. So there was definitely a learning curve and a happy medium to this IM. Um, so... First of all, the foam tip was a wondrous transformation, helped uh, quite a bit, uh, but I still found something was off. Uh, and then I moved to, uh, and that's a, the, the tantrum filter is a um, mesh filter. And, um, and then I ended up uh, listening more, and then I put a cotton style filter on it. And that's about a 400 level, but what happens is it is it does somewhat of the mesh but not as much so it knocked a little bit off uh, about three or four dbs off of the two kilohertz peak but left a lot of energy still there so with these changes um i was pretty happy at that point um and i was getting now uh, more so than ever, a really analog-like sound signature really starting to come out and, and shape. And I wanted to nurture that a bit more. So uh, then I started playing with sources. Um, then I went to the Gishelli Labs J2, the AKM, uh, with the topping A90D stack. Uh, then I tried the uh, iFi stack here, uh, which is quite warmer uh then i went to the shanling up um dap a uh, little dongle um and then i tried um the truth of your shear and i found really there was weirdly enough there just wasn't enough juice in the uh in the uh, high hippie to actually I mean, it'll get to higher volumes, but I just found it was running out of steam where obviously the 10 watts of the uh, A90D topping doesn't have any of those issues. And surprisingly enough, the Truth Ear Shiro drove this quite well. So I don't know if it's a combination of that DAP and these IMs that don't, uh, the sound wise was fine, but it just meshing together, I don't know, um, wasn't the greatest sound combination. So lastly, cables. Um, I will tell you that this stock cable, it was not a good pairing. Um, the gold elements and the silver SPC elements just, it doesn't need any more help. Gold typically uh, makes it a bit warmer and silver adds uh, an extra amount of percepted sheen to me on the top end and it certainly doesn't need it there. Not with when I ended up with that six millimeter 3.8 filter. So, um, lastly, um, on these cables, I ended up uh, doing some cable rolling and I came up with this uh, Hakuge Peaceful Voice Pure 7N Copper. And I hit Nirvana at that point. It was exactly what I was looking for. So the combination of just enhancing the bottom end and nothing else, uh, no extra coloration on the mids or the highs, uh, was a perfect combination with the foam tips, with that cotton filter on the nozzle, um, and the Truthier Shiro uh, or the A90D was a great combo. So that's how I started my listening impressions. Uh, based on that. Uh, by the time I finished with all of that, uh, I got it to sound where 
and it, this is how it should have sounded, in my opinion, uh, as a huge open stage where uh, you're sounds like you're sitting in a concert a hundred rows back versus behind a piece of glass in a studio. So that's uh, how I imagined, and I and I, uh, this should work from my experiences with other ones, and it certainly can get there. It, it just took a lot of work. So here's a picture of the final configuration showing you the purple peaceful voice cable 4.4 again um, and with the phone tips some no-name brand I have no idea what they are they worked I will say straight off the bat that the gold planar GL AMT 16 is unlike anything you've ever heard uh, it does not sound like a planar it does not sound like a dynamic driver it doesn't sound like a balanced armature set and it doesn't sound like any hybrid I've ever listened to. Um, it is quite unique. Let's go to some track impressions. Um, and this, again, I love these in the fact that uh, listening to these gives me a uh, an idea per track of how this I am is portraying the music that I am putting through it. So first one up, uh, Bubbles by Yoshi uh, Horikawa. This is a great track for listening to stage uh, depth. Um, there's a whole bunch of uh, balls and stuff being dropped on the floor. And typically you can hear when they hit and, and bounce back up. Um, I found on the, the AMT-16 a great sense of width and actually depth. Uh, and the height were all excellently done. It sounded like it was in a huge room. It really did. Uh, and the mics uh, were close and far away. I'm not sure if that's how it was recorded, but that's how it presented to me. Uh, I would say it's not the most natural sounding um, or the best I've heard for this track. That would definitely go to the soft ears Twilight. Um, it also seems to be missing quite a bit of the note weight uh, from the different balls. Typically, you can hear the weight of the ball and the bounce of that. Um, and here, it was a little bit harder to hear that it was a ping pong or a basketball or whatever they used, um, where you could tell that clearly on different IMs uh, and certainly on the, the Twilight. Um Nothing Else Matters, Miley Cyrus. Uh, very nice bass texture on this track. Absolutely incredible extension. The high end. Sense of air, amazing. Uh, we're perfect. Uh, it, 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 the stage was wide. It, uh, but still fits entirely in your head. Like it's, it's still wide, but uh, it's still intimate too. It's all close inside of your headspace. Um, and that is, you know, I'll go to the overall impressions too, but that's how I would describe the stage on this one. Uh, if there was a, a, a big oval stage, it would be, you know, you would get great sense of width, not too much depth, uh, height was okay. Um, it, it presents differently as well. It's hard to describe the stage completely on this one, but it, it, in no way, shape, or form would you call this a 3D holographic stage, uh, in my opinion, especially from listening to The Twilight, which I haven't heard it's better. Uh, poem by in Chinese, uh, drum by Hawkman Kim. Uh, and this track, again, was interesting. Uh, for the bass, you could clearly hear the resonance of the drum skin. Uh, but what seemed to be missing again was the note weight uh, that you would typically get from like a dynamic driver. The attack and decay, uh, though still very good, uh, felt like something was missing. Uh, 99 Luft Balloons by Nina. Um, the Gold Planner uh, GL16, GL AMT16, uh, does vocals amazing. Uh, this track, no exception clean clear articulate correct energy in the vocals to bring forward uh, a very nice female presentation 
uh, and still keep great balance in the track between the bass and the high frequency energy. So well done there. Uh, Lux Eterna by Metallica. If you're not familiar with this track, it's a lot of very fast uh, bass. Uh, the kick drums, uh, the speed of the bass uh, was well presented. But what I found again was missing that snap, uh, right? That you would get from a dynamic driver or even a BA. And I thought, uh, though it did sound very analog in its nature, uh, I just felt it was missing some of that energy and I wish it had more excitement in the track by adding in some more of that weight and the speed. So, uh, Trust by Sixpence, None the Richer. Such an analog sound, it, the, the I am it is. And it, it, again, going through these uh, tracks and these standout tracks, and it was like, wow, that is just uh, uh, amazing and different and lovely. Uh, the piano was absolutely bang on. The vocals were perfect. This track with these IMs, you can actually hear her lips coming together a few times when she is singing. And that's a really cool experience and a rare one to hear that level and kind of detail, uh, it was a real treat. A New Year's Day by Taylor Swift. Uh, what came to mind with this presentation was very organic, smooth, a wonderful replay. Uh, I wasn't listening to any gear at this point. Um, I was just simply enjoying the music. Uh, hey You by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Okay, so how did the GLAMT-16 do in an orchestral orchestral piece well it had wonderful extension and the dynamics were really great the flute all the instrumental sounded uh, so nicely done uh, there was just maybe a hint of warmth or maybe that was just the analog sound uh, coming through uh, but whatever it was was uh, simply wonderful uh, a little time well time by roger waters uh, the opening with the bells and the clock you know, it puts a huge grin on your face. It, it, it'd be hard not to, you know, ha have a shit-eating grin on this one. Um, Trouble was such a nice presentation. Roger Waters' vocals had weight. It had a husk uh, to him, and it sounded very, very natural. So I thought that was well uh, presented. Uh, Witchy Woman by the Eagles. A uh, perfect example of how uniquely analog the presentation on... This, these gold planer IMs are. Uh, it did it did it in a way in such a uniqueness uh, that I haven't heard before in anything, uh, and it was a real treat in IMs. I'll, I'll say that. Sorry. Um, She's a lover by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. In this track, there was some very nice uh, bass hits, and the weight was great. Not the fastest, but a very nice punchy low end, and there was zero bass bleed uh, with outstanding male vocals. So vocals, female, male, lovely. Uh, Watt Gorilla by Wind and Withering. An amazing ton of high-frequency energy in this track, all done so nicely. Excellent separation, sparkles. There was no harshness, no sibilance after my final tuning. Uh, Give Life Back to Music by Daft Punk. Uh, so I'm throwing some EDM to these bad boys too. Uh, here to actually figure out how the bass was going to do and on this track, I thought uh, the bass was very organic sounding. Again, not very speedy, but nicely weighted with an old school analog thump think 12 inch in a ported enclosure uh, would this be my first choice for this kind of genre probably not but i will tell you one thing that you can uh, you can listen to them really loud <laughs> for all, for many hours uh, that was a given and i did it ghost story by sting all right so i'm trying to listen to some male vocals again to, uh, and the guitar which sounded very nice uh, Sting's voice is very smooth. Um, I'm going to use that analog sound again. It, it didn't sound like he was in a studio, which he normally does. It sounded more of a bigger presentation. And it's it's very unlike most replays I heard from this song from other IMs. Thank You by uh, Ditto. Um, my notes were very organic sounding, vocal so smooth. 
right? Uh, number 16, I only got 20 of these, bear with me. Walk on the Wild Side by Lou Reed. On this track, the bass on the guitar was missing a lot of that mid-bass to make the sound acoustically correct. The vocals were amazing, but the overall presentation just seemed to be lackluster. Uh, without that sharpness that uh, I came to expect, and maybe it was that kind of analog tuning coming to play again with this set, uh, but it left me wanting for more. So, Way Down Deep by Jennifer Warren's. Uh, well, if you've ever listened to this track, it's well recorded. Jennifer Warren's voice is um, amazing. And it's an exceptionally well recorded track here where you can hear excellent details. Um, amazing high frequency extension. The drum hits were a bit more weighty in this track and punchy. And that was a surprise from the previous tracks. And can't tell you why, but maybe it was the amount of energy in the track and different, again, making our brain perceive more of one thing or less of another. Uh, you Look Good to Me by Oscar Peterson. So how did jazz do? Well, that little triangle instrument uh, at the very beginning was incredibly lifelike. Uh, amazing. The, the strings are also very good, but I found, again, the bass was light overall for the whole presentation, um, but it was lively and fun. Would I use the Gold Planer GLAMT-16 for jazz? Wouldn't be my first choice, no. Um, there's just not enough of the bass for the, for the pianos and the bass guitar and the drums to give it a realistic replay. Uh, but the presentation and the space that presents is so very appealing. You know, they these things do some things so incredibly well and other things okay that you could almost forget it, right? Uh, hey Now by London Grammar. This track is a perfect example of what the AMT does best. It's very analog. You hear all the noises, the pops, the super incredible vocals, uh, you hear it all. It's very detailed and done in a way that I found it was very, very special. Uh, last one, The Feeling of Jazz by Poncho Sanchez. On this track, uh, trumpets sounded fabulous. Uh, but again, there the Achilles heel of the gold planer comes to play. <sighs> it's Poncho's drums have a unique sound and the AMT-16 didn't do it. Um, they didn't have the poncho punch to them. So anyway, that's just some of the tracks to help me get to my overall sound impressions. Overall sound impressions. The Gold Planer is unique. It's unique on the market for now because it's one of the first air motion transformer IMs out there. Um, and until more of these sets become mainstream and the cost comes down... Um, I think people will really start to enjoy a truly analog sounding I am, as I have with this one. I have listened to I am's that um, had one of those components, whether it be the bass, the mid bass, the mid range, the treble, um, maybe the vocals. And there was an analog element to them, an old school replay style sounding but the gold planer amt 16 um this is where it presents an analog presentation all the way through the frequency spectrum from the bass to the ultra highs um it, it makes it quite unique um this i am again it just doesn't sound like a dynamic driver um it, it doesn't sound like a balanced armature it doesn't sound like a plain r set um it sounds like an air motion transformer with a big, wide, huge open stage, incredible extension, and the fluidness in the way it presents music. I love AMT tweeters in my Atom Audio studio monitors. The way it presents, again, um, that wide stage. In fact, when I started um, fooling around with my desk and my studio monitors i had put some other ones here for a while two or three different pairs and 
there was just something missing in the stage. I mean, these are near field monitors, right? So you're only three feet away from each other. But when you put the Atom Audios with the AMT tweeters, A, they disappear and you hear uh, imaging and staging uh, like nothing else. So um, it, it's about as natural. They sound about as natural without any coloration. Uh, I think true to more of the artist intended tuning. And that's what a monitor is going to do for you done correctly. Now, it's the same as my car audio system uh, components I swapped out. First thing I did, actually, is I swapped out the dome tweeters. And they're sitting, again, in my car um, on the sides. Uh, sometimes you get them on your dash. And let's face it, um, a car is a horrible environment. Um, I happen to have time alignment uh, with my vehicle so I can change uh, where that's uh, that's coming from that helps a uh, massive um, but my other dealings with this driver I know that they're very uh, linear and that was true in this case as well so even at low volumes in the car I get lots of lots of high frequencies that I love and it's very balanced in the mix and as you turn up the volume it scales incredibly well. Um, what also happened when I put the AMT tweeters in versus the domes is that uh, you're sitting on the left side in the driver's seat and it now sounded like um, the left side was six feet outside of the vehicle. Even with the time alignment with the dome tweeters, it didn't do that. It pushed it more to the left, but it didn't put it outside of the vehicle. And with the AM tweeters, it certainly did that. So that's a testament to what these kind of uh, drivers can do. And they do it incredibly well. So, um, but what I found strange now about the Gold Planner GLAMT 16s is that was different. It was a different experience. Uh, it, from all the other applications, I've heard these things. At low listening volumes, it wasn't a good experience. Um, in fact, I didn't really enjoy them at all. Um, they sounded muted. They sounded dark. They sounded... Uh, and it, and until you started putting juice to them, um, they didn't liven up. Um, and that threw me off quite a bit. Um, in order to really get a good sound impression, you need to listen to these at moderately high volumes uh, give it some juice they come alive uh, and they sound wonderful at that at that uh, battery level <laughs> for sure okay now tips uh, I hate foam tips I never listen with foam tips you'll see in any one of my reviews I've never used a foam tip thank god every KZ that's tuned poorly includes foam tips I'm not sure where these ones came from. Could be, but they work. Um, so I normally get excellent results from big open bore wide silicone tips. No, not with this IAM. It's just something about the tuning or the driver or a combination thereof. Um, it, 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 something needed to take a bit of the edge off. I don't, I don't know if you'd call it glare or sharpness, uh, but that two kilohertz bump is affecting the overall, overall tenor uh, and uh, timber of this IM and, and vocals. It, the, the foam tips gave it a, a, a sense of boosted bottom end while taming the top end in a way that was done quite nicely. And it wasn't too noticeable, but it just was enough to make it right so uh based on this one it was then nicely weighted i found with the foam tips and uh it's still missing um some of that snap in the mid bass area um that is more tuned toward my preference but i got pretty close the overall mids and vocals of the gold planner glamt 16 are spot on male female with my final tuning with those tips I just talked about and the configuration I found, the mids very natural, very musical, balanced in the mix, um, 
through my entire journey, uh, I, I, I felt some of that missing energy, though, around uh, that 5K area. So in the 2K, then it dips down, and I just wish it kind of leveled off a bit more and gave me more energy at 3, 4, 5K, uh, and it wasn't so scooped out. But again, if it doesn't have this kind of tuning, it may not sound as analog. And I won't know until I hear more of this technology, these drivers and different IMs to see if it's the tuning or is it the driver that's actually um, that sound signature, right? As for treble, you couldn't really ask for anything nicer, cleaner, uh, crisper, effortlessly done. Um, and that's what AMT really shines on. Uh, very articulate, extremely resolving set. Uh, the GL AMT 16 uh, also plays extremely honestly. If you have a poor recording, uh, you hear everything though. Pop, squeals, uh, noises in the recording. You can completely tell if this was like a vinyl rip uh, and it just goes to the testament of how resolving these IMs are. Um, if you're looking for an incredibly resolving set, swing. I think the only hit against this set really is me wishing for more of that mid-bass snap. And the tack that I found, uh, sometimes uh, I found vocals sound a bit recessed and thick uh, without the extra energy up top. That's where that came into play a lot. The stage. Uh, you can easily describe this IMM as having a very wide, hugely spacious kind of sound. Um, definitely more attuned to a concert kind of, you know, feel than a studio recording. Uh, again, I still found the headspace very intimate. Uh, I didn't find a great amount of depth in a lot of tracks or height. Um, that it could project. And I would, again, not describe this as very 3D at all. So in conclusion, overall, if you were really willing to take a chance on a $1,500 set, uh, you will get probably the most analog sounding experience currently on the market. You would also need to spend some time like I did with this set to bring it out to its best. Tip rolling, cable rolling, source rolling is a must. Uh, and I would expect you to do nothing less for $1,500, honestly. Um, you're doing this set a disservice. But owning this set, if you did, you would get something unique. Uh, other technologies don't bring to the table. Um, and for that, uh, I'm not sure if the GLAMT-16 is so unique because of the tuning or is it unique because of the technology and the uniqueness of the sound that the AMT puts out. And again, that'll be hard to determine until uh, more sets come out uh, and people are willing to cram this full range driver into an AMT or come out with maybe even a hybrid. Um, as it is for now, I am very humbly thankful for experiencing this set. Uh, and I have enjoyed my time immensely. I think it's uh, one that would be awesome in your collection um, if you're looking for this kind of sound signature uh, and uniqueness. If you think you would enjoy the Gold Planer AMT-16 um, with such an analog sounding, you might want to consider this one for sure. So. That is my thoughts, uh, and I thank you very much once again for joining me on my channel. This has been the Gold Planner GL AMT-16. Tone Deaf Monk, tuning out.